you like astrophotography but like me live in a city you'll be all too familiar with the problems of light pollution coming from street lamps lights from cars billboards or stadiums like the one behind me here the other problem is that star tracking equipment and telescopes are often heavy bulky not easy to move around and you have to go out outside the city in order to get good pictures so that's why I decided that I wanted to try and piece together a small lightweight star tracking setup that would be designed to put in the backpack put it on your back and just go out wherever you want if you want to go hiking if you want to go camping those kind of things places where you can't bring big bulky items and that setup is what I want to show you today so to start out with I've gone with a small light tripod that it collapses in as you can see to a very, very compact size again going for something that is easy to just throw in a backpack and the tripod's probably going to be one of the larger items. This would be very small and flimsy for what you would usually want to do for astrophotography and you can see you can, can extend out these legs but even after you lock them up again the legs here are still a little on the flimsy side for, for something that's so, so stable as you want to have for, for good astrophotography. But the reason why I like this tripod in particular, this is from the company called Nest, N-E-S-T. Um, I know I have this for years, is that the legs will lock in a position like this, meaning I can put them out like that. And when I put that on the ground, even though yes, it will be a lot closer to the ground, but it also means it's gonna be a lot more stable in this configuration when, uh, when I'm out using it. But really get a small tripod. What you can do is many of these tripods will have a hook here on the underside. That hook you can use to hang a bag or something, and that's gonna help stabilize the tripod when we begin to put weight up here on the top. The first thing I have on is what's called a leveling plate. This is, well, as the name suggests, a plate you put on to make sure that it is level. When you put this one outside, it'll be like a rocket terrain. You can't be sure that the top here is actually level, and that is what this plate does. It's quite simple, just screws on the top, and what you can then do, like so, is you can loosen it here on the side, and now this top section here will tilt back and forth. There's a little bubble lever, so you can make sure that your bed, at least here, is 100% level before you begin any of, uh, of your other um, equipment on top. The next I have here, this is called a wedge. This, all that it does really is it allows you to, to tilt it, and you can also make fine adjustments to the, uh, um, to the pan left and right with these two screws here. This would, uh, normally I'll just put this straight on top, but I actually ended up putting a small piece of paper in between because that knob there was quite unfortunate to be aligning just above the bubble level on my leveling plate, meaning that when it was on, I couldn't see it. So putting that little piece of paper in between mean that once I screw this in place, there we go. The arm over here is free and I can, uh, can actually see the bubble level um, underneath. So with this, this of course was going to be, going to be used for doing our polar alignment, um, which we're going to look at here in a second. And in this, I have the main star tracker. This star tracker is from a company called Move Shoot Move. This is called the Move Shoot Move Rotator. And if I can get this out of the packaging here, that is it. It's a black box. I put a, um, uh, an Arca Swiss plate on the bottom, which fits in the, uh, in the wedge here. So that means I can just go ahead and, uh, and loosen this one up. And then this will slide in place like so. And what you have to do now is you need to make sure that this surface here is pointed right at the North Star. And of course you can now do that by adjusting the knobs here on the back, which is gonna tilt the, um, uh, your Star Tracker, or you can use these knobs here to adjust it left to right. So you have a, um, so you have this thing aligned. Now in order to help you align, it comes with a little laser pointer. I will show you here comes with this bracket as well as the laser pointer like so what you do is you take this bracket you put it on here on the side you tie it in so that it is nice and tight you loosen this thing up here slide in the laser pointer like so and now all you really do is you turn on the laser probably can't see it now because we're in a light room but if you went out in the middle of the night that laser would be very very visible and all you really do now is just you sit here you adjust your knobs down here on your wedge until that laser points right at the north star once you've done that this thing will be perfectly aligned and once that is aligned we're pretty much ready and everything we attach to here will now be tracking the stars because this plate when we turn it on 
will be rotating around its own axis once per day, very, very slowly, but it will be rotating around its own axis. And that means because we are polar aligned, this, this will now help us track the stars. But of course, we also want to be able to control what object we are going to be observing. And that's why I have uh, the next segment, which is a simple ball head um, that you loosen up. This top plate is then free to move. And quite simply, what you do is you just screw this on here. And now you're pretty much ready to go. You can now mount your camera here. You can loosen up this, point the camera at whatever you want to point that, log it up, and when the star tracker is on, whatever you're pointing at will now be tracked. For lens, I have a Canon 70 to 200 millimeter zoom lens. Um, it's only a 65 millimeter in the opening, so it's not the best at light collection. But again, I had to have something that had a decent amount of zoom, but still was light and portable enough that I could just throw it in the backpack. This like light shield here, you can just take that off, flip it around, and it becomes a lot more compact. Have another Arca Swiss plate on the uh, on the bottom here, meaning I can just take this, I can loosen up this one here. It drops into place. We can then lock it up again. There we go. This one will then go on the opposite way like so. There we go. And now we would be ready to point this at whatever object we are interested in observing. And of course, camera would go back here, but the camera is currently being used to record this video. So I'm not gonna be mounting that right now. So while this is of course not gonna be as good as if you had a dedicated proper telescope for taking pictures, the fact that it is so small and so light and so easy to take with you, you can set it up in no times as you just have to screw what one, two, three, and then uh, a, a quick plate. So three pieces need to be screwed together and a quick and a release, quick release plate and you're good to go. It means you can be up and running quickly. You can take it down quickly. And again, it's small, it's light. You can take it with you if you're going to go out camping. I think it's a wonderful, wonderful setup for the more mobile astrophotographer. So you can imagine that you could kick the ball so hard that it would leave the Earth's atmosphere never to return. Now the velocity where that happens is called the escape velocity. For the Earth, that is around 11.2 kilometers per second or about seven miles per second.